We welcome uh, Matt uh, to the uh, podium now and uh, appreciate his faithful service, this Matt Coleman, <laughs> with Operation Christmas Child. Thanks, Sam. Let's pray once more. Dear Lord, uh, allow this scripture today to, uh, in some way, uh, go about changing our lives uh, in the next way you would have it changed. Uh, we thank you for your love and mercy. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to be looking at a few verses today, and we're going to start out with uh, 2 Kings 18, if you have your phones or Bible, and, uh, and we'll go from there. It's kind of a strange verse, but it'll kick us off. This is talking about uh, Hezekiah in 2 Kings. He did what was right in the, in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father David had done. He removed the high places, smashed the sacred stones, and cut down the Asherah poles. He broke into pieces the bronze snake Moses had made, for up to that time the Israelites had been burning incense to it, it was called Nehushtan. All right, that's a strange little passage we have there. And some of us may or may not know the history behind that. I'm coming to this. My context coming to this is somehow a few nights ago, I ended up in Second Kings, even though I was reading through Deuteronomy. Maybe if some of you have read through Deuteronomy, you know, I might have gotten a little bored and just skipped somewhere else. Um, but it, it happened to line up with several things that were going on in my own life. Um, one of those being in Deuteronomy, I'm reading through time and time again as, you know, the Israelites are wandering the desert and, you know, waiting to enter the promised land. They're getting warning after warning. When you enter there, you know, guard against idolatry, guard against idolatry, guard against idolatry. And it gives all these examples. And then I'm thinking about, you know, some recent travels or places I've been in the past or lived. And I'm thinking about, you know, even in terms of kind of Christianity, these places, you know, when you talk about the Holy Land, um, you know, and all the different places that kind of almost some, some worship or idolatry is set up. Um, India, where, you know, one of the disciples was and kind of performing miracles and some of those sites are kind of worshipped or Abhazia, again, where a disciple was, performing miracles, was martyred and um, even places where reportedly you know, angels have shown up to, to different people groups in the Caucasus and said, worship, you know, the one true God, worship, you know, the Lord, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And then they end up worshiping and, and their God turns out to be that angel that came. And just, just all this kind of idolatry going on that I've seen in different cultures. Then I'm reading about it in Deuteronomy. And then I skip to Second Kings and get this, you know, Asherah poles, and the sacred stones and the bronze snake Moses had made. Well, um, so let's look a little bit deeper at the snake. Um, this is back in Numbers 21. And uh, this is after, uh, this is during the time of the desert where people are wandering, Israelites are wandering, and they've once again are complaining against the Lord. You know, we were much better off in Egypt, so a plague of snakes came on them. Um, so we start reading in verse 6. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take away the snakes from us. So the Lord prayed for the people. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it on a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. So that's a pretty good thing. Uh, this bronze snake that came along and saved uh, many, many people. Of course, it was a miracle that the Lord did uh, through Moses. Um, that's not the only place it's mentioned. Um, sometimes we kind of glaze over this when uh, we're using John, uh, John 3.16 and sharing the gospel, but it actually shows up in John 3. 14 and 15, just before, um, for God so loved the world. And, um, you know, I, I was able to be uh, a part of uh, one sharing of a testimony, basically sharing the gospel 
uh, where a friend was sharing with a, another non-believing friend, and they actually used these verses, which was the first time I had heard that used directly, you know, to share the gospel. But this is one of the most important conversations Jesus had that, that we have recorded for us. And so this is uh, reading in John 14 and 15. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him, for God so loved the world. And um, so I look at that, and I see that incredible story of the Old Testament. I see that Jesus himself referred to it and referred to it in terms of being kind of a picture of, of what he was doing to save the world. I'm like, wow, that is pretty amazing. Yet we go back to that first verse that I read. Hezekiah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and he destroyed the bronze snake that Moses had made. And I look at that, and, you know, many times, you know, when we, when we think about idols, we think about, you know, the big, the big trappings of, uh, you know, just life or even life in America. You know, when you think about, you know, possessions and power and prestige, you know, these different things, you know, many times we don't think about even the good things or the things that, that were good that we've somehow taken to a, a different place. We somehow put on a pedestal like the people did um, with this snake, which they had been burning incense and worshiping uh, this snake. And um, uh, a writer, uh, Richard Rohr, says, the church, just like the people of Israel, has continually been tempted to idolize itself. Um, you know, I think that can include spiritual disciplines, laws, scripture, all of those things good if they're put in place. Sometimes we can worship our ways more than we can worship Christ. And I think that's what was happening with the Israelites uh, I think that's what happens to us today. You know, if you guys are like me, uh, in my early days of being a Christian, I read all about the Israelites, especially in the Exodus, and I just couldn't help but think, man, how stupid are these people? They keep making just the dumbest, dumbest, they say the dumbest things, they do the dumbest things. And, you know, as we get more mature in Christ, we realize, man, he's definitely talking about us. And uh, and, and we do far worse. I think we're at a far worse place place of uh, idolatry now and when we realize that when we're idolizing we're putting ourselves in control we're kind of taking that seeming control out of Christ and his lordship over our life and we're kind of clinging to that in some way so with all that um, you know we don't want to uh, settle into a world that we were never meant to be at home in right this is this is temporary um, Idolatry is basically making this world or our ways home. And uh, so I urge us to, to, to guard against that. I urge us to look. I know for the past week I've been looking at myself. I've found two or three idols, very good things in my life that the Lord has used, but I've started to put a little higher than they should be. So I'd encourage you to uh, take a look at your life and uh, see what we rely on for comfort in making sense of the world. See what we... Um, see what's maybe impeding us from hearing his voice or impeding us from saying yes to what he's telling us to do. And some of those may be indicators. Um, so that's a little bit on idols today. And uh, I think we can go to our groups and pray and uh, have a good day.